Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insights and indeed information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So are you in the mood for an epic quest, a perilous journey, and of course the ultimate rags to riches story? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about Popper's Ladder. Pauper's Ladder is a game about you, a pauper, competing to become the next ruler of Brighthelm. You have a series of quests to complete to prove yourself worthy. On your turn, you and your birth companion move and explore the map. Revealing all sorts of items, monsters, events and fun. The winner is the first person to learn three virtues and be declared the new leader. Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, Popper's Ladder is definitely a game about epic quests and adventures, all in kind of a fantasy setting. And while there are a number of exploration style games out there, they do have a tendency to be story driven. And I think that's where Popper's Ladder sets itself apart. It's, it's definitely more focused on the events and the things you encounter than it is about the overarching story. And there is an overarching story um, and it's a very fascinating one. Um, I quite like this cool idea of somebody is trying to become the next ruler. Um, and it doesn't really, you know, affect gameplay a whole lot, but I liked it. And it definitely piqued my interest from the get go to come and have a look at this game. Now, similar titles, um, oddly enough, this reminds me a little bit of those edifying, you know, snakes and ladders games, where if you do something good, something good happens to you, or if you do something bad, you'd be bitten by a snake and you would fall down the board, you know, one of those. Um, but really it's greatest similarity, I think, is a game like Talisman, which is one where you are moving around the board, trying to stop at particular locations to reveal what cards were there and encounter all sorts of wacky, weird and wonderful things. Definitely has that kind of feeling to it. Okay. Thing two, mechanics. Well, Pauper's Ladder really focuses on movement and set collection. On your turn, you're going to move around different areas of the map and flip over a card to see exactly what kind of event you might encounter. And sometimes these are things like ingredients, sometimes they're people that need rescuing, sometimes they're monsters, and sometimes they're completely random stuff like the circus. Um, and because this game is about, you know, finishing your quest first, it is a bit of a race to move around the board to be the first one to complete all of your goals. Um, now, this is a pretty simplistic game, but it is a fairly solid one and why it works so well here I think is actually to do with the variety of cards available for each different zone. Um, I kind of had a lot of fun digging down through them to see what we might come up with next, what might happen, would it be the thing I wanted or not um, and that's definitely the random element to the game but I think the cards themselves are just so quaint and cheerful and interesting that it really lends itself well to this style of game. Now you play as a specific character you get to pick from one among four um, and each of them has their own special ability um, nothing too groundbreaking but a nice touch the other thing I particularly enjoyed is the fact that you have a pet bird a companion that travels with you who acts like your own pauper token in the sense that it can move around the board just like you can now it can't do everything but it does mean that you essentially get two goes in one turn which I thought was pretty exciting and it also means you can cover more of the board at once and also who wouldn't want a pet bird I, I just thought that was very nicely done um, and it helped with that feeling you know of how long it was between one turn to the other um, the only mechanical issue I found with the game is the fact that certain areas can become let's say blocked with cards and that's because when you re reveal something for a zone it stays there until somebody's capable of picking it up or defeating it and sometimes it would just be the case that neither of us while playing wanted this particular items or could fight this particular monster and so the entire zone would get clogged um, but that's the only kind of major mechanical issue I came across with this um, overall this is a well put together and very charming and um, simplistic game and it's one that I can imagine families really enjoying thing three on the table 
So this is a game you're going to notice from across the room because of its brightly coloured board. You just couldn't miss it. Um, and while it doesn't take up a whole bunch of space on the table, its setup is a little bit on the busy side. And that's because you have to organise and prepare all of these little decks, you know, for every item and every zone and everything you do really. Um, it takes about 40 minutes for two of us to play and we found the rule book to be pretty good um, although it has been updated on BGG I believe um, however we are left with one velveteen bag that we've no idea where it belongs now replayability wise um, this game has tons of it and that's in virtue of all those slightly awkward to deal with decks of cards um, but not only that there's different characters to play with each time you play as well so that can kind of you know mix up the whole game a bit Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, I have to admit I'm a little bit torn here because it is the game's box art that drew me to it in the first place. I just really liked the colors, I liked how peaceful it looked, and of course it had a magpie on it, which makes everything 100% better. Um, but I found myself to be really unimpressed with the artwork inside the box and on the player boards because it all looks quite gritty and grim and, and sad. Um, you know, it didn't seem to fit with this aesthetic that we see on the outside of the box. Now be that all as it may, every time I've posted about this game on social media, somebody has commented on how much they enjoy the artwork. So I think that just goes to show that, you know, beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. Now component quality wise, um, it's all very, very good. I particularly enjoy the ginormous meeples. Um, I think they're a fantastic touch. It's not every day you get a really, really big meeple to play with. Um, but overall, whether you like or dislike the look of this game, you have to admit that it's got a feel really all of its own. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, Popper's Ladder really is a bit of an oddball for me because initially when it came out of the box, I was super excited. There were all sorts of fun things like player mats, giant meeples, stacks of colored cards and this really cool colored board. Um, there was a lot of promise there. Um, but I found that as I started to, you know, wander around the board looking for specific items, the gameplay really felt a little bit random and a bit tedious. Um, now it is true that it does feel like exploring and questing, but gameplay just became a little bit static over time. So I wasn't overly impressed with my first attempt. However, the more I played it, um, I have to admit its charm rubbed off on me a little bit. Like sure, the game plays a little bit long, but it is simple and straightforward um, and there is something fun about it. It's definitely a game that I could see on the shelf with, you know, Cluedo and Guess Who or something like that. It definitely feels like one of those family classics. And I think if you want a game that's kind of fun and easy and you love a little bit of random, then this game is definitely one you should look at. Do I think you should have Pauper's Ladder in your collection? Well, if you're looking for a light game full of quests, adventure and exploration, then this is a game worth checking out. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Popper's Ladder, why not shout them off in the comment box below? And until next time, tune in again for some more short and informative board game reviews.